Hello friends, welcome to Freshers Live. Today is 21st Feb. Here I will discuss all the important questions that may be asked from today's current affairs and important facts related with each question. So watch the video very carefully and try to answer the question asked at the end of this video. You can download the PDF of the video from the link provided in the description. You can also download the PDF from our website as well as WhatsApp groups. Also you can find the link for the Hindi version of this video in the below given description box. The link for the Hindi current affairs is given there. Before moving forward, let's check the answer for the question asked in the last video. Who is the chairman of cabinet committee on economic affairs? The correct answer is option B, prime minister. Before going forward, let me share a recent update with you. Swine flu deaths reached 377 across India. The number of those infected by the flu has crossed 12,000. Rajasthan reported the highest number of cases, that is 3,508 and fatalities 127. The government of the states most affected by the virus have now issued advisory to control the pandemic. The swine flu virus is harbored in pigs but transmitted through the inhalation of contaminated droplets of moisture or through contact with a contaminated surface and a person's eyes, nose or mouth. The Drug Controller General of India instructed 10,000 licensed pharmacies across India to increase their stock of two main drugs used to treat swine flu. Ozeltamivir and Tamiflu is the two drugs that is used to treat the swine flu. Indian government has initiated to educate citizens on swine flu symptoms or precautions. What all are the further steps should the government take to control the spread? Suggest your opinion in the comment box. Now, let's move on to our today's session. Here comes our question number 1. How much did the center approve as recapitalization package for 12 public sector banks? The correct answer is option C, Rs 48,239 crore. The center has approved a recapitalization package of Rs 48,239 crore for 12 public sector banks. Till now, 12 banks are under the purview of PCA framework. It aims to bring the better performing banks now in the prompt corrective action category out of the restrictive framework help those that had come out of the PCA to stay out of its equipped non-PCA banks to meet regulatory requirements and help the PCA banks to meet their requirements. The 12 banks under the purview of PCA framework are Corporation Bank, Bank of India, Allahabad Bank, Oriental Bank of Commerce, Bank of Maharashtra, Dhanlakshmi Bank, Yuko Bank, Dina Bank, Central Bank of India, Indian Overseas Bank, United Bank of India, IDBI Bank. Moving to our question number 2. Union Cabinet recently approved a hike in DNS allowance to central government employees from 9% to DASH. The correct answer is option B 12%. Dearness allowance to central government employees and dearness relief to pensioners have been increased from 9% to 12% with effect from January 1, 2019. This move will benefit 48.41 lakh central government employees and 62.03 lakh pensioners. Previously, the cabinet had increased dearness allowance in March 2018 from 5% to 7% in accordance with the recommendation of the 7th Central Pay Commission. Now, let me share a few points about 7th Central Pay Commission. It is constituted in February 2014. It is headquartered at New Delhi. Chairman is Ashok Kumar Mathur. The role of the Central Pay Commission is to review the emoluments of all central government employees. Heading to our question number 3. Under which scheme was the Eco Circuit project in Kerala inaugurated? The correct answer is option D. Swadesh Darshan Scheme. K.J. Alphonse, Union Minister for Tourism, inaugurated the project Development of Eco Circuit Padanam Titta Gavi Vagamod Tekkadi. 
under the Swadesh Darshan scheme of Ministry of Tourism at Vagamon, Kerala. This eco circuit project was sanctioned in December 2015 for rupees 76.55 crores. Major works carried out under this project includes Eco Adventure Tourism Park at Vagamon Cultural Centre at Kadamanita. Now, let me share few points about Ministry of Tourism. It is formed on 1967. It is headquartered at New Delhi. The minister responsible is Alphonse Kannathanam. It is responsible for the formulation and administration of the rules, regulations and laws relating to the development and promotion of tourism in India. Moving to our question number 4. Which country conferred Sushma Swaraj with Grand Cross of the Order of Civil Merit? The correct answer is option D. Spain. Government of Spain presented Grand Cross of the Order of Civil Merit to Sushma Swaraj for India's support in evacuation 71 Spanish nationals during April 2015 Nepal earthquakes. The Operation Maitri Hindi word for amity and friendship was a rescue and relief operation in Nepal launched by the Modi government and Indian armed force in the aftermath of the April 2015 Nepal earthquake. Now let me share few points about Spain. Capital is Madrid. The currency is Euro. Prime Minister is Pedro Sanchez. Heading to our question number 5. Odisha government has launched Dash for the farmer's children. The correct answer is option C. Kaliya Chhatra Bruti Scholarship. The government of Odisha has launched the Krushak Assistance for Livelihood and Income Augmentation Chhatra Bruti Scholarship for the children of farmers. The scholarship is under the Kaliya, a scheme for financing farmers in Odisha. The eligibility for the scholarship is students should be the children of Kaliya beneficiaries. They should be studying in government professional colleges on merit. The government has launched the Kaliya Chhatra Bruti program so that the children of the farmers excel in the future. The state government would spend Rs 10,180 crore over three years until 2020-2021 in providing financial assistance to cultivators and landless agricultural labours benefiting 92% of the cultivators in the state. The scheme also processes interest-free crop loans up to rupees 50,000. Heading to our question number 6. Who won the Professional Photographer of the Year Award in the 7th National Photography Awards? The correct answer is option B. Sri S. L. Shant Kumar. The 7th National Photography Awards were presented by Union Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Colonel Rajavardhan Rathor. The 7th edition of National Photography Awards was organized at National Media Center in New Delhi. The theme for the professional category was Women-Led Development and Amateur category was Fairs and Festivals of India. Lifetime Achievement Award Sri Ashok Dilwali, Professional Photographer of the Year is Sri S. L. Shant Kumar. Amateur Photograph of the Year is Sri Gurdip Diman. Now, let me share few points about the National Photography Awards. National Photography Awards are presented by the Photo Division under Ministry of INB. National Photography Awards aims to promote art and technique of photography and to encourage professional and amateur photographer from all corners of the country. Heading with our question number 7. Which of the following initiative is to encourage startups, women and youth to advantage through a e-transaction on government e-marketplace? The correct answer is option A. Swayat. Union Minister of Commerce and Industry and Civil Aviation Suresh Prabhu launched Swayat in New Delhi. It is an initiative to encourage startups, women and youth advantage through e-transaction on government e-marketplace. It aims at creating a conductive atmosphere for interaction between key stakeholders within our entrepreneurial ecosystem and government e-marketplace which is the national procurement portal. 
24 stalls were set up by women SHG startups and government organizations. A movie on Jem Swayat was released by C.R. Chowdhury, Minister of State for Commerce and Industry. Now, let me share a few points about Delhi. The Chief Minister is Arvind Gejriwal. The Governor is Anil Baijal. Moving to our question number 8. Which state police inducted India's first humanoid robot KP boat into their force? The correct answer is option C, Kerala. Kerala State Police has become the first police department in India to use a robot for police work. Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan inducted the humanoid robot named KP Boat gendered female at the rank of sub-inspector. Now, let us know more about Kerala. The capital is Trivandapuram. Chief Minister is Pinarayi Vijayan. The Governor is P. Sadasivam. The official language is Malayalam. The literacy rate of the Kerala is 94%, that is the highest rate in India. It is a land of coconut trees and backwaters. Heading to our question number 9. Mark 1 Tejas is a dash prototype. The correct answer is option B, light combo aircraft. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited Mark 1 Tejas, the light combo aircraft designed and developed in India, has got its FOC certification. The final operational clearance certifies that the world's lightest fighter plane is ready for use. LCA MK1 would soon be inducted into the Indian Air Force. Now, let me share few points about Indian Air Force. It was founded on October 1932. It is headquartered at New Delhi. The Chief of the Air Staff is Air Chief Marshal Birendra Singh. The Vice Chief of the Air Staff is Air Marshal Anil Kosla. It is a part of Indian Armed Force. Now, moving to our last question, question number 10. Where was the 8th World CSR Congress 2019 held? The correct answer is option A, Mumbai. The 8th World CSR Congress held between February 17 and February 18, 2019 in Mumbai, Maharashtra. The theme of the year 2019 is Sustainable Development Goals to focus on corporate strategies, innovation and strategic alliances. It was attended by participants from 33 countries to encourage the efforts of individuals and organizations. Dr. Saumitra Chakraborty won CEO of the Year Award. CEO of Innovative Financial Advisors Private Limited Social Entrepreneur Dr. Saumitra Chakraborty was awarded CEO of the Year at the 8th World CSR Congress. He has been organized for implemented various program in partnership with various corporations and NGOs in the field of health, environment, education and livelihoods. To conclude this session, here comes the question of the day. How many banks are under the purview of prompt corrective action framework so far? Try to answer the question and drop your answers in the comment box. Okay friends, that's for today. Thanks for watching our video. If you find the information provided in our video useful, please do like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel. Follow us regularly to stay updated on Current Affairs. Until then, this is Freshest Live signing out from Current Affairs video.